War is always a possibility, but when it is, here at our back door, we need to do something. How's everybody doing today? Morning, sir. Okay, we're going to shut the doors. We'll start it off with, uh, my name is Rick Jones. I'm the Butler County Sheriff, Butler County, Ohio. Uh, I just came back from the National Sheriff's Training in uh, D.C. Uh, three days ago, two days ago. We were briefed by the FBI director, that is the director of the FBI, and several federal agencies. There's 3,300 sheriffs in the United States. The President of the United States refuses to meet with the sheriffs of the 3,300. We have a hierarchy, we have a president, we have a vice president. The President of the United States refuses to meet with the sheriffs. He also refuses to meet with the police chiefs of the United States. They have a hierarchy also. He refuses to meet with them to talk about border issues or to talk about crime that's going on because of the border issue. We were also told by Mr. Ray, the FBI director, that there are more red flags going off now than before 9 11. Okay? I say red flags. 9-11, red flags popped up. Some was investigated, but most was not. And it was a sad day. Meaning people that are here in this country that are wanting to do harm to us. We were also explained we're, in the, we're bombing two countries right now. Two countries. These people do not like us before this stuff. There's thousands of people here from other countries. 160 different countries. They're here not to be our friend. Some of them are coming because they're wanting to come here to the best country in the world, the way we see it. Some are coming here to do harm to us. And we were told by the FBI director, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We were also told five sheriffs went to Israel, Five weeks after the attack, the only thing that saved the Israelis, the government, was the local police. They were outgunned, outmanned, they came over, the Palestinians did, they came over, they killed, raped, the sheriffs were there, they talked to the police, but the local police are what saved that country. You can't just call, even in Israel, you can't just call the military up and they're going to be there, okay? They went house to house, raping, killing. The Israeli police, when our guys got there, the sheriffs, said they just don't hate us. They hate you guys equally. And the same people that trained them are the same people that train people to hate us. The FBI director said the 9-11 hit. There's more red flags now than them. So, and he said, these are people that want to kill us and do harm to us. Now, so you're wondering. I want everybody to know what I know. I can't tell you everything, but I want the public to know that we are in a terrible way right now. The United States, and I'm going to get to the local, the United States, we're on the defense. You can't be just defense and not have an offense. We have no offense. We're just defense. We're absorbing these attacks. We're in other countries. We're supplying them with weapons. We're supplying them with our, our, our treasure, our money. And we're not doing much back home. So, with that in mind, we were also told that they're going, this is from the federal government, three days ago, they're going to attack our elections, which they've always done that, just not the national. They're going to go into the locals. They encouraged us to talk to our local election officials and be prepared as much as they can for cyber attacks. Even locally, you have to be prepared. Expect the unexpected. We've been told that, again, they're coming here to do harm to us, and even in Ohio or in the United States, we're not gonna be able to call and ask for help from the federal government. They're gonna be busy. The military's not coming, the National Guard, the 9-11 hit, it was all the police and the fire. And 
they were in total, total organized chaos. The military had the scholars. And I don't want, somebody asked me, am I like Doomsday John? And I said, no, it, 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 I'm not like Chicken Lily. I want you to know what I know. And if you don't believe what I'm telling you, that's okay. You can do what the Israeli citizens do. You can build a little cell house in your basement. And good luck. Uh, now, get to where we've been attacked here in Butler County. You're going to think, well, we've never been attacked. We have. The Russians attacked our system, our electronic system, our computer system. They hacked it. They also are trying to hack just not all of us. And they, we were down for two months, just to paper. Hacked our dispatching, hacked everything. Now, was that to help us? No, it wasn't to help us. It was to hurt us and cause chaos. As we speak today, the Russians are still attacking our computer system, just like they're attacking most of yours. But I want the public to know. The Chinese tried to attack our cyber system here in Butler County, which includes everything that we have, dispatching for troops and fire five times a day. I want to repeat that. Five times a day. The Iranians are attacking our computer system and trying to hack three times a day. I want to repeat that. Three times a day. Now, are they doing that to help us and be our friends? No, they're not. They're trying to disrupt everything that we do. And this next election coming up, they're trying to do the same. So what we're doing here is we've got rifles in every police vehicle we have. We have what we call a go bag. We have extra magazines. And we're going to start training civilians. We've offered uh, classes to train civilians. And we're going to start training civilians on what to do in disaster sick and emergency sick. Naturally, we can't train the whole country. We can't train the whole county. We put this up online yesterday. It's full. We can do like 30 people at a time. We're trying to get it. And the organization that is doing that is um, uh, Texas a and They're coming here. The federal government's paying for it. They're going to train 30 civilians on what to do in the disaster city. 30 out of 400,000 people is not much. So we're trying to get more flights. Don't want to cause fear. Don't want to cause panic. But I want the public to be aware that you are under attack. And when they're attacking, they're trying to get our cyber system. We have a grid system. But the county does. The whole United States. Hell, our grid system goes out when it gets hot. So, and our grid system is from the 1960s. And they're trying to attack our phone system. The Chinese are flying over with their little balloon. That's not to help us and help us do some weather for us. And all we're doing is we're on the defense. We're absorbing it. And these other countries that are attacking us overseas, it's a lot of drone attacks. Getting the drones. You have the technology that local law enforcement has on drones? Zero. We can fly drones and most police departments and sheriff's offices have drones. We can't detect drones. Hell, they look like a bird in the sky. We can't make the drones stop. We can't stop them. When you see football games on TV, the national football games, they call time out to stop the drones. Hell, my grandkids have drones. Everybody has drones. We have no technology. The federal government doesn't share any of the drone technology with us. So what we're going to do is we're reaching out to the private industry and we're going to see if we can get anything that can detect drones and how we can stop drones. Now, again, it's not to scare people. This is the truth. Everybody in this room, the news media, you guys get hacked. You try to get, they try to hack it. One of the local channels in Cincinnati was hacked. They were down to paper for several, several weeks. Just paper. When we were hacked, we were down to paper. Our computer system, our dispatch, all happen. Again, that's being attacked by foreign countries. You wouldn't think that a foreign country would be attacking. The public needs to know we're being attacked every day. Now, people that are here to do us harm, do we expect? I've been to the border three times. People are not just turning themselves in. They're actually called gotaways. And some of them are getting through with backpacks and packs. Now, 
Are they bringing groceries with them? We don't think so. We believe the ones that don't want to get caught, there's a reason for that. We believe they're a, a good, strong possibility they're bringing something here to cause us harm. You have to believe that. China has safe houses in every state in the United States. Now, after I discuss that, I'm going to take questions. But there's three things I'm going to be asking the state of Ohio to do. On the offense, not just the defense. I've reached out to State Representative Sarah Crothers, and I've reached out to State Representative uh, Cindy Aver, two state representatives, and I've asked them, I've instructed them, and you're going to receive a copy of it, that there's three things I'm asking the state to introduce legislation. One is the northern border. You think that we don't have a border, but we do in Canada. So what happens is the Border security have been pulled, uh, a lot of them, a large portion of them, quite a few of them, to go to the southern border. So what happens when we do that? Drugs are coming back across more the northern border. People are coming across. Water and land. With that in mind, I want you to keep in mind, I'm asking that there that be legislation introduced and that the governor appoint a task force the interdiction of people and drugs coming in across the waterways and the state. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. I hope that was enough info. And if you want more, you can always look at this sheriff up on YouTube.